So we think we're going to find cancer at much earlier stages going forward. Uh, and that this is going to be, multi-cancer screening is going to be a $150 billion market in the U.S. alone. Uh, and so, again, very excited about long read sequencing and its impact on multi-cancer screening. A quick disclaimer for today's episode, it is a sensitive subject for most of us. I personally have lost a family member to cancer, and I know many of you have as well. So while we will focus primarily on the investment side of these breakthroughs, I need you to know I'm also rooting for success in this big idea on a very personal level as well, and I know that you are too. So here's to technology not only giving us a means to find financial freedom, but perhaps giving some of us life that without these advancements may otherwise lose it. Two quick definitions. A liquid biopsy is a test done on a sample, usually of blood, to look for cancer cells from a tumor that are circulating in the blood or from pieces of DNA from tumor cells that are in the bloodstream. Tumors release a variety of biomolecules into the bloodstream that can be collected with a blood test, separated from the plasma, and then studied. The circulating tumor DNA, or CT, DNA and the intact circulating tumor cells, CTCs, are two components targeted with a liquid biopsy. Multi-cancer screening, the subject of today's episode and one of ARC's new big ideas for 2021, is just what it sounds like. Early detection liquid biopsies that can detect multiple types of cancers in the blood. ARC suggests that in the early days of multi-cancer screening, these tests should focus on a narrower set of cancers like pancreatic that are difficult to identify early and then expand to more types over time. So of course, the goal of earlier cancer detection is to identify the disease at a stage when it can be effectively treated, offering the patient a better chance of long-term survival, and this is the most important thing. But from here, I do want to focus on the investment side. As you heard Kathy say, the multi-cancer screening market should scale to $150 billion in the U.S. alone, which could avert 66,000 cancer deaths every year in the U.S., saving 1.4 million human life years. In the words of Ben Franklin, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Here's ARK Invest genomics analyst Simon Barnett just over one week ago. He mentions metastatic cancer or metastasis, which is when cancer cells spread from the place where they first formed to another part of the body. Cancer cells can break away from the original tumor, travel through the blood or lymph system, and form a new tumor in other organs or tissues in the body. So if we look at this chart, what we'll actually see here is that only about 17% of new cancer cases are diagnosed as metastatic when a patient presents to the hospital. Uh, whereas around a quarter of those are gonna be regional where the cancer has spread just to surrounding lymph nodes or tissues. Um, and the majority, about 60% of cases are actually gonna be uh, you know, earlier stage, localized cancers, the more treatable ones. But the interesting phenomenon is that if we look at um, over a five year time frame, the majority of cancer deaths, about 55% of them are actually gonna come from that pool of patients that was diagnosed um, with distant cancer um, when they were given their, their diagnosis by their oncologist. And so what we can see here is that by eliminating this category or, or trying to heavily reduce the incidence of distant disease, uh, we can be more successful at lowering cancer deaths overall. To mention that, that liquid biopsies, the ability for us to detect the faintest signs of early cancer in the bloodstream, you know, using a non-invasive blood draw, uh, this is a type of technology that even five years ago in 2015, per patient, uh, as we've modeled, would be about $30,000 per test. And because of the combination of various innovative technology platforms, and I'll mention a few, uh, things like deep learning, which have allowed us to discover the fact that we could use um, targeted methylation or looking at, at changes that are not to the sequence of the genome, but to modifications that live outside of, of, of DNA, um, as well as the cost decline from the core sequencing technologies. And finally, synthetic biology, our ability to print DNA and use that as a means to pull those molecules out of solution and blood and be able to, to find them confidently. All of these things have, have come together to actually enable this market. And, and we think that um, you know, in, in, in 2021, the, the cost uh, to run these types of tests is going to be um, roughly 1000 to 15 hundred dollars and that by 2025 we imagine that price is going to come down to around 250 dollars per sample which is really going to unlock we think uh, a massive uh, market opportunity it should also be noted the 66,000 u.s cancer deaths this innovation could prevent annually is without any improvement in cancer therapy or treatment a topic for a future episode Arc believes multi-cancer screening is one of the largest genomics markets and remember genomics is the study of all of a person's genes the genome, 
including interactions of those genes with each other and with the person's environment. For easy access to investing in this space in the coming years, you can take a look at ARC-G, the Genomic Revolution ETF, with an inception date of October 31st, 2014. Here you can see the top 10 holdings if you want to take a closer look at individual companies, something we will certainly do more of in future episodes, so you know what to do if you'd like to see those. And a quick look at ArcG's historical performance shows us annualized returns of 180% in 2020, 59% a year on average over the past three years, and a 36% return over the past five years every year. In a very important note, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force is an independent consortium of physicians, medical scholars, and policymakers that publishes national cancer screening guidelines every now and then. Since its creation in 1984, the organization has issued screening recommendations only for breast, cervical, and colorectal cancers. Despite a lack of formal guidance, physicians do however often screen for liver, lung, and prostate cancer as well. But today, nearly all screening technologies are half a century old, and in the context of recent scientific breakthroughs, they are flawed. Medical imaging techniques like mammography and low-dose CT scanning are highly sensitive but suffer from poor specificity, generating false positives. Sensitivity is the ability to detect who does have the disease, and specificity is the ability to detect people who do not have the disease. Because of limited accuracy, poor resolution, and misperceptions, many doctors and patients are hesitant to comply with national cancer screening guidelines. Some patients eligible for colonoscopies avoid the screening out of fear that the test itself will cause harm or generate false results. Consequently, many professionals in the medical field are pessimistic about the prospects for cancer screening. This is part of why ARC believes that legacy screening tools are not the answer to earlier cancer detection. Instead, liquid biopsies, molecular tests incorporating decades of genomic insight, cutting edge machine learning, and synthetic biology are likely to move to the front line of cancer screening now that the technology has advanced and their cost has dropped to critical thresholds. In ARC's view, multi-cancer screening could reduce the death rate by shifting the average diagnoses from distant towards localized cancers. ARC selects solid tumor types known to produce detectable quantities of circulating tumor DNA and or tumors already included in multi-cancer liquid biopsy screening studies and then their model incorporates both age and tumor-specific incidence rates as well as stage-specific incidence and mortality statistics from the Surveillance, Epidemiology, and End Results Cancer Database, otherwise known as SEER. I also need to make it clear that despite everything we just covered, there are still obstacles to widespread adoption in the near term. While some companies in the space may pursue near-term commercialization, ARC does not expect FDA approval nor reimbursement to occur until at least 2023. Without these prerequisites, widespread adoption simply is not possible. Additionally, companies will need to address issues like lead time bias, over or unnecessary treatment, and the significant costs relative to the current standard of care. Lead time bias is just the length of time between the detection of a disease and its usual clinical presentation and diagnosis. It's the time between early diagnosis with screening and the time in which diagnosis diagnosis would have been made without the screening. In future episodes, we will start taking a look at individual companies that are driving these ARK Invest big ideas forward, but it's crucial to first understand the context within which these companies are operating in. Please take a moment to like the video if you did, subscribe if you'd like to, and I hope to see you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day.